In this video, we're going to consider the auxiliary equation and what kind of an expression it will give us um, if it has complex roots. In several videos ago, we had an introduction to the uh, auxiliary equation, and it works in situations where we have a differential equation. It worked for first order differential equations too, but almost all of our problems we use it for solving second order differential equations, because the first order ones are pretty trivial. But now it works then when these coefficients that we have are constants. And as we discussed in our introductory video to the uh, auxiliary equation, the general form of the solution is y equals e to the mx. It's raised to some exponent and multiplied. It can be also multiplied, of course, by a constant. Incidentally, the playlist for all the videos is at the website, um, digital-university.org. Now, what is m? How do we determine what it is? And as you saw in the introduction video, what we do is the derivatives are replaced with m. This is a second order derivative, so it's m to the second power. This is a first order derivative, so it's m to the first power, which is just m. Here we have no derivatives. We can think of it as a differential to the zero power. So we would have m to the zero power, which is just one. So the differential equation becomes this auxiliary equation. It's a quadratic equation. We solve it to determine what m is, and then that will give us the value up here to use in the exponent. We have two values of m, so there's two solutions to the equation. One where e is, e is m to the 1x, the other is e m to the 2x, or any linear combination of those solutions will also be a solution to the differential equation. We demonstrated that several times now in uh, the previous videos. Now, if m, when we're solving the uh, quadratic equation here, if we don't get two different values of m, sometimes we just get a repeated root. What we showed in the past two or three videos is that the general solution is this. It's e to the mx, but one of the solutions will have this multiplied by an x. And again, we gave some demonstrations where indeed this does satisfy the, uh, the differential equation and gives us two different solutions to it. But now suppose that we're solving a quadratic equation and we get complex values for m. Maybe when we're solving the, uh, the uh, quadratic equation, we have something like this, which gives us minus 2 plus or minus i times the square root of 5. Notice that when we do get the complex values, they're going to occur as conjugates. And we can write it in a general form as then some real number plus or minus i times b. Now, what kind of a solution does that give us? Well, if we just go back to our general formula then for m, for one value of m, we would have a plus ib. And for the second value of m, we'd have a minus ib. So let's look at this in more detail. Here we have complex values for m. They occur as complex conjugates. So we could have one solution is y1 equals, to be some constant, say c1 prime times e to the a plus ib times x. And then another solution would be y2 to be a different constant called c2 prime times e to the a minus ib times x. And that is a, 
valid way of writing the solution, but it's not very useful. We can get it in a more useful form if we recall Euler's formula. Remember e to the i, um, let's say e to the i q will equal cosine of q plus i times the sine of q. So let's go back here. Let's look at this. Now here we're adding, but of course that's adding exponents is the same thing as multiplying, so we could say y1 is c1 prime e to the ax, and then we have e to the ibx. Same thing for y2. That would be C2 prime e to the a and e to the minus ibx. And remember now, we can say that if these are solutions to the differential equation, then the linear combination is also a solution to the differential equation. So you can say, in general, y is y1 plus y2. Well, let's look more closely what, what y1 is. We have y1 equals some constant e to the ax. And then here, this would be cosine of bx plus i times the sine of bx. And here, same thing for y2. We're taking y1 plus y2, so we say, let's just say that y equals y1, that's this, plus y2, so for y2 it's going to be c2 prime e to the a, and then here we're going to have cosine of minus bx, there's a minus sign here, and then we're going to have plus i, I'll write it up here, times the sine of minus bx. So this should be y. But now remember, the cosine function is an even function, so this is just the cosine of bx. This is much the sine of minus bx, or the sine of minus bx. That is just minus the sine. So let's rewrite this, and we'll write it down here to make it neater. So we have y equals this plus this. C2 prime e to the ax. And that's the same thing as the cosine of bx. The cosine is an even function. So we have this. That's an odd function. So that would be minus i times the sine of bx. So here, then, is now our solution. It's now written in this form. Well, we have trig functions and we have exponential functions. So it's looking like it might, it might shape up with something useful. But we still have complex values here to deal with. Is there a way, then, that we can get this into a form 
that involves only real values. And to do that, we want to look at this in more detail. We have these two constants right here. Now, suppose that for one solution, we had this and this both equal one half. So for one solution, we'll just call it y1. C1 prime, C2 prime, both equal one half. So I'm going to put one half here and here and add them. Remember, y can be a sum of these two. So let's add. Well, when we add, these two are going to cancel. We're going to have 2 times the cosine of bx times 1 half. That will just give us then y1 equals ex times the cosine of bx. So there's one solution. And we've got that then by, we had an arbitrary constant, we just set that equal to one half. And we can, at each one of these were a solution, we can take linear combinations of solutions and still have a solution. We demonstrated that several times in previous videos. Now, let's look at it. Let's go back to the way it was. Remember this, this is one solution, uh, e to the ax times the cosine of bx. Now, let's go back to what it was before. We had C1 prime here, and we had C2 prime here. Now, let's see if we can get another solution by using a different set of constants. Suppose we have, let's C1 prime, that is going to be minus i over 2. Replace this with minus i divided by 2. And c2 prime, we're going to replace this with plus i over 2. Now, when we multiply here, we have minus i over 2 cosine plus i over 2 cosine. These are going to drop out. So we'll have y2 equals e to the ax. And when we multiply across here, here we have i squared is negative 1 times negative 1. That's plus 1. So we're going to have 1 half e to the ax times the sine of bx. And same thing here. i squared is negative 1 times negative 1 is plus 1. This gives us a 1 half e to the ax times the sine of bx. So when we use these here as our constants, then we get a solution saying that y2 equals e to the ax, adding these together, times sine of bx. And you just saw a moment ago that when we had these two constants here, c1 prime, c2 prime, they equal one half, we had the solution y1 was e to the ax times the cosine of bx. So both of these are solutions, and then for the second order of differential equations, as we demonstrated in uh, earlier problems in our series dealing with the auxiliary equation, if these are solutions, then any linear combination of them are solutions. So we can say that in general, the solution to our differential equation is y equals some constant called c1 e 
to the AX times the cosine of BX plus C2E to the AX times the sine of BX. And here then is a general solution to the differential equation when the M's, the roots, at complex values, well, we've got a real expression here for our differential equation. And that is the, uh, the idea behind it. And we'll work some specific examples, but you see how this is, uh, see the pattern here, that if we have a complex root like this, once we know this, we can immediately write down the solution. It's going to have a sine and a cosine. This will be the terms of the cosine and the sine. And the power that E is raised to is this real number, A. So once we determine what, what M is from solving the quadratic expression, and we get this complex number, you'll see we can immediately then write a solution to our differential equation. And again, we'll have a couple examples to demonstrate that.